right hi everyone I'm Tracy and welcome to today's video so I I wanted to do something showcasing my little mini face brushes so I'm talking about maybe something smaller or as small as the Sonagi detail detail Lotus detail or the Hakuhodo G511 and other ones that are smaller some are even eye brushes and what inspired me to make this video is this fairly, well, this is new to me, the Nakamura Seisaku Show, a number six eye brush. I've been loving this. I've been using this every day for my blush and um, highlighter. So I want to show you guys how I use my tiny little face brushes, or in this case, an eye brush. But this is a really big eye brush. Even if you have big eyes, it's, you know, it's going to be... A, kind of hard to use unless you're just setting your eyes or just putting like a like a single shade This is going to be really hard to use on your eyes But I'm going to show you how I use it and I've been really really loving the results I get so I didn't finish my makeup. I just have like my foundation eye makeup and my lip color so I'm going to use as many of these as I can so you guys get an idea of of you know what to do with these brushes you might have these already in your collection and maybe don't know how to use them or if you're looking for a really nice highlighter brush or like a small blush brush I'll give you guys some good recommendations so let's start out with the I'll, I'll do the Hakuhodo G511 this is one of my very first little face brushes and to be honest I didn't use it for a long time I just didn't understand like how to use it and it just took me a while but now that I've gotten the hang of it I really really like this mainly for powdering little areas like this so I'm going to just dip this into my by Terry setting powder so my skin leans dry so I try not to put too much powder on I just try to powder where I need to and this powder is very subtle, so you, you, may, you might not see a big difference. But I just wanted to show you the technique that I use to powder this area. And I powder this area really heavily because of my sunglasses. And here I try to like mattify this area. I didn't put a lot of concealer on today, but if you do, and you want to set it you can use this brush to kind of press that product in and really you know set your base makeup this is not a dense brush it's just like the it's the perfect density i think and it, it performs identically to the Sonia G Lotus Detail. I don't know if this one is still available, the Sonia G, because it was limited edition, but this Hakuhodo one is. So I just wanted to show you guys the comparison. Uh, this, the Sonia G is dyed and undyed goat hair, and the Hakuhodo is squirrel and goat hair. So either one, I mean, this one is less expensive, but... Um, it might it it might be out of stock i'm not sure but th that's how i use those little angle brushes i'm gonna bring one out again later when i do my bronzer but this now i'm going to show you how i use these little tansedo angled i think they might call them eye brushes i'll put the the styles down below but i like both of these for my cream contour cream bronzer, sometimes even cream blush. And this is um, tea dyed goat hair. So these hairs are pretty coarse. I've tried them with powders and I, I didn't love it for that, but I'm really liking it to do my contour. If you don't want to like have a heavy contoured look, you just want to very subtly, you know, contour your face. And I feel like as I get older, I don't need to contour as much because, you know, my face is losing volume, but I still like doing a little bit of contouring. I'm going to use the Patrick Ta um, Bronzer Contour Duo. And I just start right here, right where my hairline ends, right there. And I just press into this area. 
and it's gonna put on just a little at a time so you're gonna have to build it up a little but every time I use this for my contour I'm, I'm really happy with how it comes out and if you don't want to put like a big you know stripe of contour on your face I feel like this is like the safer way to do it it's easier to add product than it is to take away so that's kind of how I look at my contour and bronzing process so this one is smaller I'll show you how the bigger one works I think the smaller one is a little bit easier to use this one is the Oh, it doesn't have the name on it. Well, this is the YWS 12T, and I believe this is the YWS 14T. I believe the 14 is the, the size of the brush. And the Y, if it has a Y, that means it's a long handle. So this is how I use this one. I think this one puts on a little bit more at once, but both of them provide a very subtle application. So if you're using something that's kind of heavily pigmented, I think a brush like this is good. It's going to be very hard to overdo it with this brush or these brushes. I'm trying to do a good job at like getting the contour into my hairline. Okay. So see how that's a very, I'm going to um, smooth it out with some powder, but that's how I've been starting out my cream bronzer you can even bring it here I generally don't like putting creams here because I feel like it's going to get on my clothes but you can definitely do that okay so you see how it did that just like a very um subtle contour and Okay, and then I'm going to use the, um, the Sanya G Detail, Lotus Detail, to set that and kind of smooth it out. So I'm going to use the Dior uh, Forever Bronzer in number five. So I'm just going to go over that cream bronzer with the powder bronzer. I feel like it stays in place longer. I didn't used to do this, but I was watching a channel. I'll link her, her channel below. Um, her name is Nikki LaRose and she's a makeup artist and she gives a lot of, she does more like tutorials and makeup tips and I've been following her actually since before, she, well before she had her channel she was Susan Yara's, um, Susan Yara has a channel called Mixed Makeup and she was her artist, makeup artist and she put her on her channel, now she has her own. Anyways I've been watching her tutorials for some time and so see how like subtle that is and then if you want to take the bronzer up you can do that but I'm going to use another brush for my blush so I, I want to be able to show that so I hope that's translating on camera so that's how I've been doing my my bronzer recently and so now I'm going to show this, um, the Nakamura Sei Sakusho eye brush. It's the number six eye brush. It's made of pine squirrel and synthetic hair, but considering the materials, it's very soft. It's not like a squirrel hair brush, but it's a very, very light, um, airy brush. I would say of all the brushes that I'm talking about today, this is the the lightest and will have the lightest um, application. So if you're like really trying to lightly powder, you can use it to powder. And if you want to um, do like a small amount of blush, you don't want it like in a big area, this brush is amazing. So I'm gonna use it with the Suku um, number 10. It's the Oku Hibiki Melting um, Blush Formula. And I love this shade. It's a permanent shade, so I believe it's still available. It's like a mauve pinky mauve shade I like I really like these shades so I try to I, I don't like blush in a big area for the most part so I think that's why a brush like this works for me and I just kind of put put this on with like a circular motion 
It's also good if it's a really pigmented blush and you don't want to pick up too much because it's this brush is not going to pick up a lot. So see how that just very... very lightly applied that. I'm gonna put a little bit more than usual just so you can see it. And then um, just so I could show this brush, I really haven't used this a whole lot and um, that's the Song and G Mini Cheek. It's another little face brush. And I know a lot of people love this brush. And I, when I do use it, I really like it. And I, I like it for blush and, and highlighter. So I'll just show you how, how this one works. And this is a permanent style, so I believe you can still get it. If it's not in stock now, it should be eventually. This one's a little bit denser than the, um, the angle, the, the lotus detail, and it's flat but this, the materials are the same. It's not dense, it's just a little bit denser than the angled one. And it's dyed and undyed goat hair. And if you wanna like kind of connect your eyeshadow to your blush, this is a nice way to do that. Oh shoot, I didn't powder that little area. So I forgot to powder my face. So you see how that blush kind of stuck to that area. I'm going to try to fix it. So this is a brush that I use for my foundation today. Put some foundation on there or a lot. And then I'll powder it. I normally do. I just Today, because I was going to try to do everything on camera, I forgot to powder. Um, oh, this is another small one that's nice. It's the Curato KK002, the cheek brush. It's made of gray squirrel. This is also one of my favorite small blush brushes to use. I also like it for powder because it's so light. It just, it won't heavily powder your face. So that's how I fix problems that I have. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so see how that, I put more on this side, but you can pretty much get the same results with these these brushes I'm going to use today. Okay, that's better. All right, and then um, another brush that it's it's not like super tiny, but it's pretty small. But this is one of my favorite ways to put highlighter on. I'm also going to show the um, the Nakamura brush to do highlighter, but this brush is also really nice. And when you look at it, it's it's very basic. It's the uh, Chik, uh, the Hakuhodo S113, and I just love it. It's good for blush powdering, but I do like it for highlighter the best. And I just like the way um, it feels to use this brush, so I think that's part of it. So I'm going to use this with the, the Rare Beauty Highlighter and Mesmerize. I'm going to use it on this side. I just kind of put it on kind of the, the tip of the hairs and like right here. So yeah, this is not a subtle highlighter. I know a lot of people are trying to get your hands on this. It's definitely has a lot of impact, so you don't need a lot. Oh, I don't like how I did that. I try not to get the highlighter too close to my under eye area. And I really like the way this does highlighter because it, it very lightly will do your highlighter because it's fluffier, so it's just not gonna pick up as much. I 
And I feel like with this one, you can really like blend a little bit more because it's not going to lift your makeup. It's so fluffy. So yeah, that's how I've been using this one. Oh, and another thing that these brushes are really nice for is to or remove fallout from, you know, your eyeshadow because they're just so light. They're not going to disrupt anything. And I know like, you know, brushing fallout sounds like a very simple thing you can do with, with any kind of brush, but I, I don't think that, at least for me, that's not the case because I don't like doing my eye makeup first. I always do my base makeup. So sometimes my base makeup is still a little sticky. And when some of that eyeshadow falls on, if it stays too long or if I use a dense brush, it'll smear it into my makeup and that causes a bigger problem. So a brush like this is going to be very light. It's not going to, you know, really touch your face much at all. And so that's another way to use a brush like this. So I'll show you guys the brushes I talked about today. Oh, and I did want to talk about the Sonia G Detail Pro. This one, I, I really don't use it. Um, I know a lot of people use this for highlighter. It's a little bit dense for me because you know, I don't like a strong highlighter look, but if you're someone that wants to get more impact out of your highlighter, you can definitely use a brush like this. Another way that this is good for, and I'll show it to you guys, is if you like, for example, really want to set an area, set your concealer. This is a nice brush because it's fairly dense and it will, it will really, like if I'm trying to like mattify right here, If you have oily skin or you need your makeup to really last. See that kind of like takes down the shine and smooths that area out. I didn't put concealer here, but I really try to make this area set well. So throughout the day it doesn't get more creased. So that to me, for my makeup needs, this is the best use for this brush. The other ones you can use it for powdering. It's just going to be like a lighter application. So if you want to do like the under eyes or like in the middle of the face, I would say the brushes I spoke about are really good for that. Well, the ones that are, are not meant for cream. I'll list these below if you guys are interested in them. And I'll show you the, a quick quick look at them all. Here is the uh, Curato, the Hakuhodo S113, the Nakamura Seisaku Show number six eye brush, the Sonya G Detail Pro, the Sonya G Lotus Detail, The Hakuhoto G511 and the Sonya G Mini Cheek. And I'll show the two Tensato brushes I use. This one is the YWS12T and then the YWS14T. So it's just a little bit longer. Um, I don't know which one I prefer better. I would say I probably use a bigger one a little bit more just because it's a little faster, but they're both really good for cream contour. And I, I'm saying that with caution because I don't know if these are meant for creams. I mean, maybe not, but they were just sitting in my collection. I have another one and I just figured, you know, better use them for something, even though it might not be the best use for them than for them to just, you know, sit around. These aren't terribly expensive either. So if they start breaking down, I won't be, um, you know, very upset at, at that. So yeah, those are 
these two. I don't hear a lot of people talking about these. I think because they're kind of a specific brush, they're not really good for just anything, but I really like these. So that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!